supposed to speak, but as I sat there and I was praising God and worshiping God, along with Ron and the rest of you, the Lord spoke to my heart. And all of us have, I believe all of us will receive something from the message today. But what the Lord is speaking to my heart, there's somebody that is here particular today. God has sent you here. and has a message for you. You've been seeking God on some things, and whatever the Word gives, and I'm just open to say, Lord, okay, I've got some notes here, and I'm going to follow them, but I'm going to follow your lead. So I'm going to follow the lead of the Holy Spirit more now. And so, listen carefully. Be attentive to God's Word. When we talk about expectancy today. Expect to receive something from God. That's the most important thing. So let's do that as we... Go ahead and open your Bibles to Mark chapter 11. Uh, Real quick while you're doing that, I've got some uh, books over here. A little booklet called Why God? And Kathy's got them on the table there. And these are free. Just go get one. And uh, it gives the plan of salvation, answers a lot of questions. It's gone around the world and it's being used in a mighty way. So I praise God for that. We try it, we give it away uh, most all the time. And it's on uh, an e-book online too. One of the first books I wrote was Discovering the Power of Prayer. And we'll probably touch on a few things in this today. But we've got, I brought a few copies of that. I think, I think we sell them for $8. I don't know. <laughs> but it's on a donation basis. So whatever you want to give, if you want a book, just help yourself. So. Okay. In Mark chapter 11, we're going to look at verse 22 to 24. So many of you probably know these verses. But the biggest thing is, is what Pastor Bill told me. He says, we're here to celebrate a, a new building dedication and a midsummer festival. And I got to thinking about that, and as I prayed about it, I, I thought a new building basically is going to represent what the vision out ahead is. Realize a building, and I think most of you know this, a building uh, is not the church. We are the church, the people. We're the church. Amen. All a building is is a home for the people. Just like your your house is not the family, is it? Your house or your house is just a home for the family. The family is the people, right? So that's right. what that building represents. But that building is part of the vision to reach out to this community, to reach out and touch people's lives. Then I got to thinking about summer. Okay, here we are in summer. Now we're blessed today because if you go a few miles inland, it's 100 degrees and higher. We came down the hill, even in Julian, where we live and where we pastor, it was over 100 degrees up there. And we come down here, and I think it's, it was about 78. Yeah. And so I praise God for that. Amen. <laughs> praise God. He, he called us down here right at the right time. Thank you. Got us out heat. But in the summer, what, what do we look at? We have four seasons, and what do we have? We have spring, which is the time to plant seed. Then harvest, what, or excuse me, summer, what is that? That is the time for growth. And then you have fall, the time for harvest. harvest. And so what we're at now, Bill, Pastor Bill came down, came back from the mission field and started the church as the Lord directed him. And so he planted the seed. The vision started. And now we're into summer. And so with the new building and everything, it's summer, it means time of growth. There's going to be growth that's going to start happening. And then the, come the harvest, the harvest that God wants. Now, we're going to receive a harvest of God's blessings, but yet realize this. God wants a harvest of souls, too. Amen. He wants Amen. souls brought into the kingdom of God. That's the harvest. Well, this is the time to grow. This is the growth period for that, where souls will start coming in, and, and workers will come in, and people will be raised up that will help to bring in the last great day harvest. I believe we're heading for the last great day Amen. harvest where God will bring in multitudes of souls. Amen. And He's going to work through each and every one of us. doesn't matter where you're at in your walk with the Lord. The whole thing is to step up in your walk with the Lord. Say, Lord, I want more. I expect more from You. It isn't just, a, oh, I expect, you know, nice things and houses and cars and things. There's nothing wrong with that stuff. But I tell you this, the, the message of prosperity, I believe, was was sent for these last days. 
Because we see, no matter what happens with our nation, I believe our nation will continue on, but yet there's going to be probably some rough times financially. But when financial times hit and they're rough, people, what do they do? They usually turn to God. And when they need, when they have needs, because what they have, they, they're, they'll come down, they probably don't even have food. But if we're believing God, it says our nation may have a rough time, but didn't say the church would have a rough time. That's right. If we're yeah. believing God and That's trusting right. God, because God said in Psalms, the book of Psalms 68, 19, says He wants to daily load us up with benefits. Amen. And with those benefits, it isn't so, look what I have, look at me, look what I've got. It isn't that. It's so you can be a bigger and better giver. So you can take yeah. care of those that are in need. Yeah. That's what God wants in our lives. That's what His blessings are all about. So, and like one minister years ago used to always say, you feed their bellies, they'll listen to what you have to say. If they're hungry and you give them some food, they'll listen. But you have, you can have both. God will bless you with the, the finances, the things that we need, the blessings so we can take care of other people that are hurting. And guess what? You've been telling them, well, I serve a God that's real, a God that's alive, a God that wants to bless us. And then when it starts really happening and they see it and you're helping them and blessing them, guess what? They come on to you. And they say, how did you do that? You say, don't come to me. Come to Jesus. Mm-hmm. That's what it's all about. That's what God wants in our lives. But I tell you this, the biggest thing to receiving from God is a major key that I, I called, and actually God got on my case a couple of months ago about this. And it's called expectancy. Expectancy. God got on my case because He says, you're not expecting like you should. What I was doing, I, you know, yeah, I was not expecting. I believed God. You know, when I prayed, I believed and received and all, but there wasn't a fervent expectancy. It was kind of like I was going through the motions. So many of us fall into that trap. We're just going through the motions. God, especially at this time, wants so much more from each of us. He wants us expecting Him to receive from Him. In Mark chapter 11... Verse 22, it says, Have faith in God. For assuredly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, Be removed and be cast into the sea, does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatsoever he says. In verse 24, it says, Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you will have them. That last verse because most of it got drowned out. <laughs> Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Like Ron Perry said, he referred a lot to the Amplified Bible. I do too. The Amplified Bible says, adhere to the fact, be confident in that you've already got it. What does that mean? That means you expect to receive it. And that, That's what that means. Whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive it. Expect that you've got it. Because what is faith? Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not hoped for. Matter of fact, if you turn over to Hebrews chapter 11, let's look at that verse real quick. A lot of this that I'm going to teach today is basic teaching, but it's something that we always got to be put in remembrance of. I always say this, I like baseball. I grew up, I had a desire to play professional baseball, almost did, but I didn't. God had other plans. But I still like baseball. And every year, when baseball season comes, what do they do? They have spring training. Right. And here you got all these veterans and all, they know what they're doing, but what do they, they still got to go to spring training. What is spring training for? It's to remind them how the game is played. Remind them of what they need to do. Well, that's why the Bible says keep yourself in remembrance of the Word of God. The Bible says faith comes from hearing and hearing and hearing. It doesn't say faith comes from having heard. And so many times we hear the Word of God, we grab hold of it, and say, oh yeah, okay, I got it. Years later, we're still trying to run off that faith. Mm. A lot of times you'll forget things. I remember that I told you that book there. Years ago, I was I, I thought I got a fresh revelation from God, so I, I started teaching at the church and all. And, and every once in a while, I'll go back and reread some of my books. And just right after I started teaching that, I went back to my book and, read, and here I had read, I'd written it in that book about ten years before. And now I thought it was fresh revelation, and I forgot it. It's so easy to forget things. That's why it says faith comes from hearing and hearing. Continue to hear the Word of God. Daily, my wife and I, like I said, I, I wasn't pushing through like I used to. 
I needed to get in there and expect more. And, and so I, you know, I was reading the Word, I was studying the Word and all. But what was, my wife and I said, Kathy and I said, said, in the morning we need the Word of God. And, and so I, I, I happened to stumble across it. I, I went on YouTube and I found out I could find pretty much all my favorite teachers right there on YouTube. Uh-huh. We don't. We don't. Have, we never got television when we got up there. We just watch a few things on Netflix. But on YouTube, I found all the teachers I've been listening to for years. So every morning, about two or three hours in the morning, we put on the Word of God. Just put on the Word of God and listen to the Word on on the TV. I'm still doing work on the uh, computer stuff, but I'm listening to the Word. And because I wanted to expect, I expect God to do great things. Not only in my life, but in each of your lives. That's what He wants. But it takes that expectancy. Because it says here in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, it says, Now faith, oops, blue papers there. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. See, faith acts before it sees. It says, Lord, what do you want me to do? See, there's in this book that I explained, there's there's three types of prayers. There's the prayer of faith, which is praying the promises of God. If faith comes from hearing, you hear from the Word of God, it's praying the promises of God. Taking the Word of God and saying, Lord, your Word says, and you're praying that to God. Then there's the prayer of direction, which is listening to the Holy Spirit. Say, Lord, what do you want me to do? Because usually the way God works, He works different every time. Let's say you have a financial need, you know, and you say, Lord, what do you want me to do? He tells you, you go do it, and God meets the need. The next time, if you just go do the same thing, guess what? Nothing happens. You go, Lord, that's what I did last time, you know, but, it, you know, it worked. That's what I didn't tell you to do it this time. So that prayer of direction, what are you supposed to do? Listening to the Holy Spirit, getting the will of God. And then the third prayer is the prayer of praise, thanksgiving, praise, and worship. Thanking the Lord, praising Him, and worship Him. You start out with that prayer and you end with that prayer. And as you go, we're going to talk about that today. As you come before the Lord, you stand before Him and worship Him praising Him and worshiping Him. So f- faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. Let me ask you a question. When a wife gets pregnant, we say she is what? Expecting. Expecting. And what does she usually do? What does a mother usually do? Expectant mothers, she doesn't just sit around and wait nine months until the baby's here. No, I have, we've had three kids. I know, I've been through this. We've got grandkids, I've been through it. Wait, wait, come on. Chapter was pregnant. Man, she she went out the first one and she got it quick. She hadn't even started showing, but yet she had the crib. And then she went and got diapers and clothes and all these things. Why? Because it was the evidence she was expecting of things not yet seen. Now, through history, of course, most of the time, we can't see the baby in the womb. Now we can through sonograms and things like that. But a expected mother, she acts by faith, and she goes out and does these things. And then when the baby arrives, she has all these things there. Well, that's the way God expects us to do. When He tells you to do something, He says something in His Word, and He's giving you direction, He expects you to expect it. He expects you to get excited about it. He expects you to step out by faith and say, well, what do I need to do? Sometimes we sit back and say, well... You know when it happens, okay, then I'll get ready. I'll take care of what needs to be done. No, if you're expecting, you'll start to get what things you need in order. To start lining things up to what you need to do. That's the expectancy of it. I mean, here we are in Hebrews chapter 11. This is called the the chapter of the heroes of faith. Let's look at a, a couple of them here. Matter of fact, let's look at verse 6 before we do this. It says, but without faith, it's impossible to please God. That's a heavy-duty word, impossible. But without faith, it's impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Notice that there. First, you've got to believe that he is. Some people say, well, how do you know God is? By faith, you believe God. You trust God. And the next part is you've got to believe that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So the Christians go around, well, you just never know what God's going to do. You know, I don't know, He might bless me one of these days. No, you diligently seek Him. He says, you've got to believe. He is a rewarder of those that diligently seek Him. I think the Lord's calling you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Lord. I, I was listening, but if I'm not going to hear it let's hear it on the phone. <laughs> so here we have... He says, 
says he's a reward of those who diligently seek him. Look at verse 7. 